today about hormones and hunger and obesity and how the latest research on ghrelin, ghrelin, the peptide YY336 and uh, other hormonal uh, effects on hunger and satiety, that is fullness, a feeling of feeling full, affect the choices of weight loss surgery. And I uh, thought we'd start off by talking about uh, obesity. And most people think they understand obesity pretty well. It's not super complicated. Uh, there's good, simple, common sense explanation. It goes something like this, that it's not hard to figure out uh, weight loss and obesity. Uh, it's, your weight is simply a matter of uh, a balance between the number of calories you take in uh, and the calories you burn, or, or calories out. So calories in, calories out. Uh, that's all there is to it. Then we can explain obesity is simply too many calories in and not enough calories out. And the solution to obesity also becomes very simple and clear. Uh, fewer calories in, more calories out. And that translated is to eat less and exercise more. Heard that before? <laughs> in fact, that's the advice of most physicians, uh, most of the governmental agencies, and um, most of your friends and family who've probably told you uh, it's really simple for you to lose weight. Why don't you just push yourself back from the table and uh, maybe take up jogging or something like that? I haven't found it very effective. In fact, in thousands of diet research studies, what we find is diet and exercise is rather ineffective. Studies show that uh, follow-up at one year of all kinds of diet and exercise programs generally shows failure rates of 85 to 95 percent. That is, people gain their weight back after a short period of success and in initial weight loss. So the Atkins diet works pretty well for a while for most people, and then they fail. Um, exercise and other kinds of low-fat uh, and other fad diets are very successful for short term, but there's a high rate of failure as time goes by. What explains this? If obesity is so simple and straightforward, and yet most diet and exercise programs fail, um, how do we make sense of this? And again, there's a simple common sense explanation, which is obese people are bad. They're weak. Uh, they're unintelligent. They don't realize that they shouldn't eat a pint of ice cream uh, for dinner. They don't understand that a box of cookies is not a balanced diet. And so again, if you take some of these common sense explanations, it should be very easy. All we have to do is educate you heavy people. We should just explain to you that, uh, you know, don't eat so much. Um, doesn't ring quite true when I say it like that, does it? How about this one? Um, there's something wrong with you. You're sad. You eat for comfort. Mama didn't like you best. And you have some kind of depression or sadness like that. Have you heard that explanation for obesity? I certainly have. Um, those things then kind of leave us either that they don't seem to be very accurate or they haven't worked very well. So in other words, we could get people into counseling who are overweight, but counseling, uh, antidepressants, Things like that also are not supported by scientific research. There's not a lot of good literature in the scientific research that says if we put somebody in counseling, say with a Dr. Phil or someone else who's a, a strong believer in kind of bootstrapping and getting yourself together and, and losing weight, um, there's not good research that that's actually successful. There are lots of diet programs around the country, and many people lose weight initially, but again, long-term success with weight loss using these techniques is very unusual. So let's stop for a minute and put that aside. Let's put aside the simplistic explanations for obesity and talk a little bit about some of the more recent research on the hormones that set us up to be hungry, that control our feelings of satiety, that is, feeling full. Satiety is to feel full. And maybe that can help us understand obesity a little bit better and also give us some insights as to which kinds of weight loss surgeries are more or less likely to be effective over the long term. Okay, <clears throat> let's imagine that we're at the time of creation. And when we're creating all the animals, uh, man and woman, that we need to identify a technique so that people will know what to eat and how much to eat. 
So in fact, recent research shows that in fact we are fitted by our creator with a hunger hormone. That is ghrelin, G-H-R-E-L-I-N, or I like to pronounce it ghrelin, is a hunger hormone which is released from the body of the wall of the stomach. It's a peptide hormone, that means it's a string of amino acids, 28 amino acids long, and those amino acids released into the bloodstream going to the brain of an animal and in people causes us to be hungry. Interestingly, that hunger hormone is released like clockwork three times a day. It spikes up in the bloodstream, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And uh, when we eat and uh, complete our meal, the spike of ghrelin goes back down until the next round of release and new onset of hunger. So if we think about that, then we can think about a thin person as being in perfect balance. That is, he or she has exactly the right amount of ghrelin, the right amount of ghrelin is released into their bloodstream so that they eat and are hungry for just the right amount of food. And in an obese patient, there's more hunger, more food eaten in response to ghrelin than there should be, so that there are more calories taken in not because of lack of intelligence or lack of wisdom, lack of character, or because of sadness or depression, but because of an imbalance in the hormonal system that drives the way we eat. Now, just as there is a hunger hormone, they've recently discovered a hormone that makes us feel full, and the scientific term for that is satiety, a feeling of fullness. Satiety, or feeling of fullness, is that end of the meal when we say, ah, I'm done. I don't want to eat anymore. So ghrelin has been shown to make us and animals hungry when injected, and the satiety hormone makes us feel full and stop eating. The name of the satiety hormone that has generated a lot of recent interest is peptide YY336. I didn't name it. Peptide YY336 is released in the lower small intestine when food gets there. So you can imagine as you're eating throughout the day, and more and more food passes down into the small bowel and when it hits the lower part of the small bowel before the colon and the lower the large intestine um, you get the release of peptide YY and peptide YY causes you to feel full and satisfied. Now again a person in balance with their hunger hormones gets satiety or a feeling of fullness earlier and at the right time than someone who's heavy. And someone who's heavy overeats, and doesn't get the feeling of fullness, doesn't stop eating when they should. Now with this explanation, we can turn and look at some of the choices for weight loss surgery. So for example, the lap band does not decrease ghrelin, does not decrease hunger, and it does not increase peptide YY336. So oftentimes we see patients who, having had the lap band, are still hungry, are finding that they're eating against their wishes and that they're not satisfied. And we think those can be kind of explained by the effects or lack of effects of the lap band on the hunger hormone system. When we perform the mini gastric bypass, we cut through the vagus nerve intentionally. We cut through the stomach and make a long, narrow gastric pouch, which decreases ghrelin. There's less hunger in our patients. And studies show when we have the bypass, we move the connection from the stomach from high up in the small bowel more towards the lower small bowel and as we do this there's a rise in the release of the satiety hormone peptide YY330. So paradoxically our patients tell us that preoperatively before the mini gastric bypass they eat more yet they're very unsatisfied. They notice that they eat a lot yet they don't feel full and done. They're, even when they can't eat anymore and they're stuffed they still want to eat more. And we think that can be explained by an excess of ghrelin, an imbalance, and an inadequate amount of peptide YY336. The mini gastric bypass divides the stomach, cuts through the vagus nerve, and produces a distal bypass, which decreases ghrelin and increases the satiety hormone, peptide YY336. And that combination, we think, is one of the reasons why the results are so good in the mini gastric bypass. Well, that's it for today. We'll talk to you again soon.